In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So the word gospel means good news. And so as I read this very, very difficult gospel today, and I conclude, and I lift up the book, and I say, this is the good news of the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. It begs the question, where is the good news in this? Where is the message that I take out of uh, this church that lifts me up and carries me through the week ahead? Some Sundays, it's easier to find them. And I do believe, and with good conscience, lift that book up and say, this is the good news. But that's because I think this has more to do, and I think the takeaway needs to be more about the nature of God that we find in this passage uh, than about particular teachings about divorce. This reading has been, in my opinion, misused by the church for a long, long time, and it has beaten people over their head at a time when they are at their weakest, when they've probably been through the most difficult season in their life, this reading tells them that God's upset with them. When they're upset with themselves, and they're upset with their partner, they're upset that it didn't work out the way they had intended, and all of us have been touched by divorce in some way, whether firsthand or secondhand or uh, close friends or other family members, we have seen the crushing weight in some ways, it's even more dis difficult when, than a real death uh, when the person dies and you still see them. And you still have all of those, why couldn't we fix this? Why couldn't we work this out? Why did we fall short? What was wrong with us? And then we have this. I think we need to take a deep breath and realize what Jesus is talking about looks so little like 21st century marriage uh, that we are misleading ourselves to put it on top of our own situation. I don't think that's what we can take from this. Uh, remember, back in uh, biblical times, uh, a lot of um, uh, the polygamy was uh, a characteristic of a lot of marriages, and other biblical marriages were a covenant not between a man and a woman, but between two men, between a father and a groom. And the groom's negotiated, uh, and the woman has about as much say as the cattle that changed hands in the exchange. It was a contractual agreement that helped elevate one family status, helped maybe provide a retirement benefit for the other. It was not two people falling in love and committing themselves uh, to a life together. Although there was commitment. And the grounds for divorce in Deuteronomy if she does not please you, if you find something unpleasing about her, if you find something disagreeable, you may give her a certificate of divorce. Sort of like handing over the day's mail. Here you go. And she was dismissed. And she was dismissed to either go back and live with her parents, who were counting on her for, uh, for their retirement, father of the bride had the right to, to stone her to death, depending on the grounds for divorce. And she often was subject to a life of prostitution. And she had very little other means of supporting herself. This was an institution that left women incredibly vulnerable. This was not two people who worked as hard as they can. And I do believe that God calls us to work as hard as we can. God believes in relationships whether it be inside marriage or between friends or between business partners or between a church. God believes in relationship and the nature of relationship. But God found this institution to be leaving God's children vulnerable. And I think that's what Jesus is speaking about. And he said, what is the... What does the Bible say about it? Well, first, uh, the people come uh, and the Pharisees are trying to corner Jesus again, as they do several times. Uh, and they're asking him about divorce because it was a pretty provocative topic. Uh, either he would come down hard on divorce, uh, which uh, Herod's family had a had tremendous number of divorces, uh, and he would be listening closely. Or there was also a war waging between uh, different Jewish communities about what constituted displeasure. Uh, what disagreements uh, elevated to uh, divorce worthy. Uh, and so there was a lot of, 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 of scuttlebug around this topic, and they figured whatever Jesus answered, we can at least uh, be sure that he alienates one group 
uh, and Jesus does better than that. He alienates everybody uh, because he takes a straight line uh, and he says, this is why God believes in marriage. This is why God made you uh, in God's image, why God made you to be driven towards one another, because God wants you to be in relationship. In fact, he goes even farther than that. He starts by describing <clears throat> the first creation story. Uh, you know, there's two creation stories on opposite pages uh, of your Bible. The first creation story, uh, he made man and woman in his image, and the second one is, is the one with the rib. Uh, and it says, uh, he made a male and female in, in God's image, and then the next line is, go be fruitful and multiply. Jesus starts with that first sentence about making them male and female in God's image, making us in the divine image, and then skips Dramatically, Now, people would realize what line was going to come next, skips dramatically to the second creation story and says, for this purpose, so they would not be alone, so that they could become one marriage. And this is provocative. It's not solely for procreation. That was the primary understanding of what marriage was in that particular time and place. And he said, I made you male and female. I made you in God's image. I drew you towards each other, not for that purpose solely, but for you to understand what it's like to be in a loving relationship, for you to be in union with another person. And whenever we are in relationship with another person and we find it irreconcilable, we find it broken beyond repair, when we find that relationship uh, strained to the point where we say, I have no need of you, it hurts God. It hurts God because it hurts us. It hurts God because uh, God wants us to understand fully how much God loves us and what it is to be in that kind of relationship where you give and you forgive and you are forgiven and you bend your lives towards each other in that give and take. And when that is broken, it hurts. And it's a breach of, of a covenant. But what Jesus is up in arms against is any institution that leaves somebody vulnerable and exposed, and especially any institution in the name of God that doesn't protect God's beloved children. And so what I want you to remember uh, is that God meets us where we are. The reason that God instituted divorce and allowed divorce was because God knew our frailty. He knew that relationships break. He knew there would be instances in our life where we have weakness, where we have a break, where we can no longer see the redeeming love and unitive property of a relationship, and it ends. And God met us where we are. But God also comes in and meets us where we are uh, in any situation in which God's little children are made vulnerable. And when we're hurting most, the incarnation promises us that's when God gets down and walks closest to us. And it's not an accident that we go from the story about divorce to the next image. That image is on purpose. Where Mark has these children gathered around and the parents are bringing the children uh, to Jesus so that, he could, so that Jesus could bless them. And remember, at this point in time, uh, children are considered less than, than, than people. Uh, in fact, they used the, uh, the, the, the neuter pronoun for them two weeks ago because they haven't quite formed uh, fully into the person uh, that has value yet in, uh, in that particular society. And that was, I think, self-preservation. A lot of uh, children never lived to, uh, to adulthood. Uh, so he says, let the children come to me. Don't stop the children. Let them come to me. And he picks them up and he holds them. And I think everyone who was made vulnerable or browbeaten or defeated by divorce or by any broken relationship was meant to realize that Jesus comes down to hold them just like he picks up those child, those vulnerable ones. He says, this is the God who made you. And when you need it most, I won't beat you over the head with your, with your imperfection. I will lift you up in your full humanity and I will hold you close because I love you. And any institution that tells you otherwise is not of me. Amen.